aorta within the thoracic cavity, in other words, the intrathoracic aorta, has three segments to it. And it's interesting to note that each of those three segments is in a different subdivision of the mediastinum. So let's start with the ascending aorta. It commences at the orifice between the left ventricle and the aorta. It runs entirely within the fibrous pericardium for a distance of about five or six centimeters. Being in the fibrous pericardium, it is entirely in the middle mediastinum. The ascending aorta has just two branches and these arise at the aortic root and, of course, are the right and left coronary arteries. The ascending aorta, on perforating the fibrous pericardium, enters the superior mediastinum and changes its name to the aortic arch or the arch of the aorta. The arch of the aorta lies entirely within the superior mediastinum. In fact, the summit or the highest point of the aortic arch is level with the midpoint of the manubrium sterni. From the convexity of the aortic arch arise three large branches. The first of these is the largest and is called the brachiocephalic artery. This is the one that runs upwards and to the right, and behind the right sternoclavicular joint, it breaks up into the right subclavian and right common carotid arteries. The next branch of the aortic arch arises from the very summit of the aortic arch and is the left common carotid artery. And the final branch of the aortic arch is the left subclavian artery. So these are the three branches of the aortic arch and all of them arise from the convexity of the aortic arch. The aortic arch crosses the superior mediastinum into the posterior mediastinum left of the midline. And the moment it enters the posterior mediastinum, it changes its name to the descending thoracic aorta. The descending thoracic aorta is for the most part a left-sided structure lying to the left of the thoracic part of the vertebral column. It's only at the very lower end that the descending thoracic aorta more or less centers itself where it crosses the diaphragm to become the abdominal aorta. The branches of the descending thoracic aorta are the posterior intercostal arteries for the lower nine intercostal spaces, both on the right and left sides. So in other words, nine pairs of intercostal arteries. In addition, the descending thoracic aorta gives rise to the right and left subcostal arteries. It doesn't stop there. The descending thoracic aorta from its anterior aspect gives rise to a variable number of small branches that supply the esophagus in the posterior mediastinum. Additionally, the descending thoracic aorta frequently gives branches that supply the left bronchus. Your anatomy matters.